Let me start off with an Australian attempt at humor. Regular expressions came in an Oracle 10 and people love them. And especially if you've come from a Unix or a scripting kind of background where you've used Perl or stuff like that, regular expressions are everywhere. They have enormous power. And for those of us that you know have children that watch the Spider-Man movies, there's that quote, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. I prefer it more this way, that is, if you've got a string parsing problem, you can think about using regex. And now you have two problems because regular expressions can be fairly complicated. Let's do a demo to see where this is gonna be very, very important for you if you're currently on 11 and looking at moving to 12. Let's say someone gives you this requirement. Make sure the zip code is numeric, a zip code being a column in our table, and we have to make sure it's always numeric. Now, we might choose to do something like this. Alter table, whatever my table name is, add a constraint, check, regular expression replace, the zip code column, any number of digits, and I've left out the third parameter of the replace command there, which means replace effectively whatever I find with null. So what this is doing is saying, look along my series of, of zip codes here. And the reason we might choose to do this is because the zip code might be a varchar2 for some other possible reasons. But let's say in this case with simple requirement, re make sure that it's always contains just digits. So what the regular expression is saying, look for a digit that's backslash D plus means one or more. So it has to be one or more digits. And whatever I find in terms of digits, replace them with nothing. So what that means is a column which has only digits, that regular expression will replace all the digits with null. And then by saying check that that result is null, I'm guaranteeing that I only have digits. Now I run that command and in 11G, this is what you'll see. Nothing spectacular. It'll simply say, yep, table altered. Let's now upgrade that database to 12C. And in fact, when I say upgrade, let's do the exact same test on 12C. I run my command, alter table, add constraint, check one, regular expression, replace. You're gonna get this. You cannot add that constraint in 12C. In fact, you'll get a sort of a cryptic error message. You'll get date or system variable wrongly specified in the check constraint. Now you sort of have a look and you think, well, there's no dates. There's no system variables. Why is that error message coming out? Um, but let's see what's actually going on. When this came out, everyone just went ballistic. Everyone was saying, you know, this has got to be a bug. It works in 11G, doesn't work in 12C, etc. In fact, even I was one of these people and someone came out to me and said, no, it's not a bug. It's actually uh, an emergency fix we had to do. The bug is there. It's actually a bug in 11G. We should have never allowed this to, that check constraint to be added. It's actually a bug that we allow people to use regular expressions like that in check constraints and other places. Now let's talk about this error message, date or system variable wrongly specified. Why is that error message coming out? Well, you may have seen this before. If you've ever done something like this, and when we're fairly new to the database, this is a common mistake that, um, that we as IT professionals make. We get taught, yes, we should have lots of constraints in the database, you know, make sure the data is valid. One of the common things that people say as well, I want to make sure that all the data comes in, you know, is date stamped greater than today. And so in our mind, we think, oh, I can do that with a check constraint. I'll simply go create table T, I've got a date column called X, and I'll do check X greater than sysdate. And straight away, you get that exact same error message, date or system variable wrongly specified. And in that case, in, in that particular example, it makes a lot of sense. That error message makes a lot of sense because you can see, oh, I'm using a date, sysdate, and date or system variable wrongly specified. Sysdate probably matches both of those criteria. It's a date and it's a system variable. When we get around, to, you know, when we learn a bit more about constraints and the, the definition of them, they are, they implement a, effectively a rule about the data that is always true. And I'll put aside no validate constraints and, and the like for a little bit. You can see why this doesn't make sense because sysdate is a constantly moving target. You know, I could put a date in there that's date marked in two weeks time and it would validate, it would be valid if that constraint was allowed. But of course, as two weeks would roll on, that data would actually then become invalid because it's no longer greater than sysdate. It was two weeks ago, but now it's not. You can't have a moving target or effectively something that's gonna change inside the constraint definition. It just doesn't make sense. And it's sort of one of those light bulb moments where we stumble upon, we go, oh, of course, you know, that, that never would have worked as a constraint. Let me say, as you can see, the, the reason for that is sysdate is not deterministic. Right? It's not something that is basically consistent and works all the time in the exact same way. Every time you call sysdate, you might get a different result. So how does this relate to regular expressions? If that same error message is coming up for the regular expression, 
it would suggest that the reason we're stopping you from doing it is because regular expressions might not be deterministic. How could that be the case? Like a regular expression for a given set of inputs must surely always return the same output. The problem is we live in a big wide world. Unfortunately, regular expressions are not deterministic once you actually consider these on a global scale. And to best demonstrate that, let's jump into SQL Plus. With all due respect to any Germans on the call, but I thought I'd use German because I'm in Germany next week. I had to fire up a new SQL Plus session because I had to set my language to UTF-8 so I could just and my DOS code page to a UTF-8 such that I could actually show all the characters we need to show. So I've got a very simple select statement there. And now for some German complexity, and the complexity being there's a umlaut, I think is the two dots, an umlaut on top of the O. And you can see the sentence comes back and now for some German complexity. Let's apply a regex to that. And let's, this is a fairly common regular expression you might see. We're going to cleanse that data. We're going to sort of normalize it. So what I'm going to do is make the sentence uppercase. So we've uppercased the sentence. And once I've done that, I'm going to get rid of anything that is not A to Z. That includes spaces, etc. So as you can see, I've made the whole thing uppercase and all the spaces are gone, including the O with the umlaut. You can see it says, and now for some German complexity, no spaces, where am I getting into the regular expression with the non-determinism here? The definition of what lies between A to Z actually depends on where you live on the planet. So let's now alter session, set my language to German. So all of a sudden I've you know, grabbed my passport again. I've taken an early flight to Dusseldorf. I log on to Dusseldorf, set my language to German. I run the exact same query remove everything from that's not a to z and look in the german language settings the umlaut o sits between a and z you can suddenly see that what happens now is depending on your session variables regular expressions might give you different results and therefore regular expressions are not deterministic that's why we had to actually lock it down um, in 12.2 but it is actually a bug fix not actually an introduction of a bug. What's going to be affected by this? Regular expression like, regular expression replace, substring. Um, oh, there's, sorry, that's a typo. That's regular expression underscore count. But all of those regular expression commands are no longer considered deterministic. I spoke to some people in, in the SQL team about this, uh, of what's going to happen going forward. Uh, you've probably noticed that see, in some other functions like two char and two number and stuff, there's often a third parameter or a fourth parameter which lets you set the endless language or um, some functions actually have an endless equivalent of their function. I'm hoping that that will probably be the case. I've heard no promises of that, given that now we're releasing more, re uh, more frequently, maybe that'll work. You'll see the problem also, for example, like this, if I try create an index on a regular expression, same thing because it's not a pure function, I, it's not deterministic in the same way that function-based indexes aren't allowed to do it. The key thing here really, I suppose, takeaway from this is really be careful on upgrade because in 11, people have seen the power of regular expressions, they've gone fantastic, function-based index, check constraints, etc. All that stuff might go pear-shaped when you go to 12, uh, just be careful. One thing I have not checked, um, I haven't had time to check before this office hours, is when you upgrade to 12, whether we're gonna go through and check all those existing constraints and do something, you know, mark them invalid or whatever. I'm not actually sure whether this is going to be allowed to go and therefore you might be setting yourself up with what I call a, a sleeper problem or a bit of a time bomb where you might change your session settings and end up getting things, you know, you get incorrectly review, be reported things like index corruption or something like that or check constraints will fail when you didn't expect them to. But it's just something to be aware of. In 12.2, you generally don't want to be using regular expressions in any kind of function-based index or check constraint, etc. Um, so hopefully, that's sufficient warning for everyone and everyone can take that away.